claim was chicken metal, pretty clean, no blood. Right. I got him like right on the chin. So I start to freak out. I'm just like, this isn't going as planned. I don't know if it's too late to take it back. Right. These are the horrific details of how these two teens brutally murdered their friend just so they could rob him at home. They thought they'd commit a clean murder and actually get away with it. But things didn't go as planned. I don't know what else to do. I pulled out my knife because it was right here in my pocket. I had my cargo shorts on and I started stabbing him in the back. Now, one teen is on death row, while the other's life was spared. But why is that if they are both equally to blame for this heinous crime? Let's explore the case of the teen who was sentenced to death for brutal murder. 18-year-old Justin Back lived in Waynesville, Ohio, with his parents and five siblings. He graduated from Waynesville High School in 2013, where he was known as Bacon Bits by his classmates. He had also worked at McDonald's in Waynesville for three years. On January 28, 2014, Justin had joined the Navy and was scheduled to start training in two weeks at the Recruit Training Command at Great Lakes, Illinois. While he was hanging around the house, some friends came to visit him. That was the last time he would be seen alive again. My safe is gone. My my handgun that was on top of the safe is gone. Uh, watches. Okay, it sure. looked like it was a wreck. Justin's stepdad, Mark Cates, had come home at 3.30 p.m. to find the house completely trashed and some items missing. His stepson was also nowhere to be found. He tried calling his phone but discovered that it was still in the house. Worried that something bad had happened to him, he called 911. Like his room, um, the lamp was knocked off his dresser the, uh, in the kitchen. The tables were all shoved up against the wall. The rugs are missing. Police arrived at the scene soon after and an investigation was launched. Soon, investigators learned that a car had been seen outside of the home with a distinctive missing back window, covered in plastic and red tape. Mark Cates recalled seeing the same car the day before being driven by one of Justin's friends, 18-year-old Austin Myers. Austin and Justin had attended the same middle school and were childhood friends in 7th and 8th grade before Austin moved away. Detectives were able to track down Austin at the house of his friend, 19-year-old Timothy Tim Mosley. When he was questioned, he completely denied knowing anything about Justin's disappearance or the burglary at his house. Detectives also questioned Timothy, and based on what they had learned, the two men were arrested and taken to the station for further interrogation. And that's when chilling details of what happened to Justin were revealed. Tell me what happened from Monday night on. What transpired that led up to this? So we went back on Tuesday. Tuesday. And what was your intent when you went back to the house? Just the same thing as I said before. You think you're going just to hang on? You didn't have any other intent of taking anything? No, I didn't have any intent of taking anything from there. So Austin admitted to going to Justin's home on January 28th, but blamed Justin's murder on Tim, claiming that he had no idea what his friend was planning. Did you ever ask Tim why this suddenly happened? I didn't want to try to talk about it. Because he just killed one of my old friends in front of me, and he had a gun in his pocket. And I don't know why. I don't know why he killed him in the first place. Now, detectives had strategically placed the two suspects in adjacent rooms where they could overhear each other's statements. And when Tim heard Austin blaming everything on him, he decided to tell the police everything. After hearing him trying to sell me out, make me look like I did everything. Uh, it's bullshit. Was, yeah, how would I know about the safe? How would I know about the money? Why would I kill someone in cold blood? And he told me about it. What did he tell you? Well, like, what? He told me about uh, Justin's house and his stepdad, saying he has a safe, he keeps it cracked open, and he has a gun and a lot of money. How Austin, much money did you think was going to be there? Austin said a good couple thousand. So we were thinking, a quick job, in and out, boom, might make some money. And then we uh, came up with the plan. Uh, taking out Justin because in the way. According to Tim's statement, Austin had asked him if he wanted to make some money. Tim said he was interested, so they began debating on whether to rob a narcotics dealer or Justin's stepdad, Mark. Austin knew that Mark had a safe in the house that contained money and a gun. He told Tim that they would get a total of $20,000 from the safe. So on January 27th, the pair drove over to Justin's home in Waynesville planning to rob the safe. But their plan quickly changed when they found Justin.
Justin at home. So they left and came up with a new plan. Austin suggested that they kill Justin and steal the safe. He even had a twisted plan on how they were going to go about doing it. They were going to choke him with a wire then take the safe and some of Justin's clothes and make it look like he'd stolen the safe and run away from home. Austin even brought a three foot length steel cable and two metal handles for the job. He intended to make a garout or choke wire as Tim called it. They planned to carry out the murder the following day, but things didn't go quite as planned. So he's the brains of the operation. Sure, pretty much. I was, I was following You're the him. muscle. Pretty never much. felt like you hit bone or anything like where it was tough. It just it really was in and out. Really, uh, I had enough time. I, I, I don't, I don't know exactly. No, maybe. On the morning of January 28th, Austin and Tim started by going to the store to get supplies for the murder. They bought septic enzymes, ammonia, septic tank cleaner, and rubber gloves. They then drove to Justin's home and arrived at about 1 p.m. The plan was for Austin to distract Justin while Tim snuck up behind him and strangled him with the garo. Tim was armed with the garo and a six inch pocket knife while Austin knocked on the door of Justin's home. Thinking that the two were his friends, Justin innocently let them in. The three talked for a while and watched movies until Austin lured Justin into the kitchen. Tim then attacked Justin from behind and tried to him while Austin held him from the front. But Justin fought back and the three men struggled and fell on the floor. Now, couldn't clean no blood. Right. I got him, like, right on the chin. Okay. So I start to freak out. I'm just like, this isn't going as planned. I don't know if the dude's too late to take it back. Right. Austin then looped the garrote around Justin's neck and pulled as Tim plunged the knife another 20 times into Justin's chest. According to Tim, Justin begged for his life and pleaded with the friend that he had known since childhood to save him. But Austin told him, relax. It will all be over soon, as he lay dying in his lap. After Justin died, these two monsters cleaned the crime scene and wrapped his body in a blanket before taking some of his clothes and electronics to make it look like he ran away from home. They then ransacked the house, taking the safe, some jewelry, and the handgun belonging to Justin's stepdad. They loaded everything in the car and left the house around 2 p.m. They drove to a field in Preble County where they intended to dispose of Justin's body. But before they did that, Austin poured ammonia and septic enzymes on the body to speed up decomposition. He then took the stolen gun and fired two shots into the body. The gun jammed on the third shot. While trying to clear the jam, a bullet fell to the ground, where the police would later find it. After they had gotten rid of Justin's body, the two would crack open the safe just to find $70 and some documents. Yeah, they killed Justin for nothing. After Tim's confession, detectives interviewed Austin again, who now changed his story. This time, he admitted shooting the body in a foolish attempt to misdirect the police. He says you're the one that pulled the trigger on the gun, I and mean, he's already dead. I mean, so all I want to know is, I want to know the truth. He says you shot him, and he's very convincing. Did you shoot the gun, or did he? He also admitted to buying all the materials used in the murder, but denied holding Justin as Austin stabbed him. He claimed he was not even aware that Justin was being stabbed and thought that Tim was merely punching him. He went on to claim that he was shocked when he saw the blood. Justin's body was found the same day after Austin told the police where to find it. An autopsy revealed that he had died of multiple stab wounds. The body of 18-year-old Justin Back was found Wednesday in Preble County. Because of the cruel nature of their crime, the prosecution sought the death penalty for both teens. But since Tim had cooperated with investigators, he was offered a plea deal in exchange for his testimony against Austin. Tim cooperates, Austin doesn't. Tim tells the truth, Austin lies. Tim tries to come in here and testify and take ownership of everything that happened. My goal was to make sure Austin never got out of prison. And Tim agreed. Let me show you Exhibit 85A. Can you tell me what is depicted in that photograph? It's a 
me and Osmaz pressured seeing uh, the wire and the handles. Despite Tim having been the one that dealt the brutal blows, investigators felt that Austin was even worse because he was the mastermind. During the trial, the prosecution presented all the evidence showing how the two teens calculated and planned to murder Justin. Whose idea was the septic enzymes? Austin Myers. We pull it on the body in order to decompose of the body fat. You'd be hard pressed to find a case where there was more prior calculation than what you had in this particular case. Before the jury could give their verdict, Justin's family was given a chance to face their son's killer. Austin could have stopped it, but tells Justin, it's okay, it's almost over. You could have changed your mind many times, but you didn't, especially when Justin was begging for his life. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you how much I hate you. That is without question. I would just hope that every time you close your eyes at night, you see my, just, my son Justin. Austin was also given an opportunity to plead his case, and he begged the jury to spare his life, saying that killing him would not solve anything. For the first time, the jury heard from Austin Myers himself. He spoke to them for about three minutes, occasionally looking down at his notes. He began by addressing the victim's parents. I'm sorry that this happened. Now, I know that doesn't bring Justin back, but I'm sorry. An apology and words of regret from the teen who killed 18-year-old Justin Beck. I hate for any family to go through such pain and suffering as this. Speaking to the jurors who will decide whether he lives or dies, Austin Myers asked them to spare his life for his family. If you choose for me to die, it's only going to cause more pain and suffering for another family. Not me. It won't hurt me. I won't feel anything. It's going to hurt more innocent people. However, this apology seemed not to have moved the jury because in October 2014, after deliberating for six hours, they unanimously ruled for the death penalty. We, the jury, being impaneled and duly sworn, do hereby find the aggravating circumstance does outweigh the mitigating factors presented in this case by proof beyond a reasonable doubt. We therefore unanimously find the sentence of death be imposed upon Austin Meyer. A 19-year-old from Warren County, now the youngest person on death row in Ohio. The idea that he has no worth or value as a human being, so better off euthanized. Later, the prosecution revealed some more disturbing information about Austin's plan. He said he wanted to go get his gun out of pawn in Dayton and use that gun as well as the one they stole from Mark Cates to go kill his own mom and stepdad. Austin Myers wanted to kill his own mom and stepdad after killing Justin Beck. Just 15 minutes later, this is part of his plan. Justin's family was happy with this ruling, though they said it would not bring their son back. It's bittersweet is justice for Justin, but it's never going to bring Justin back. Justin went out in a very bad way, and so um, we're happy with it, but again, it's sad at the same time because this could have been prevented. Austin made this choice, but it's still sad because our son had to die. And he was part and parcel of the whole plan. Uh, he was the one that targeted Justin back. He's the one that, that picked the time that they were gonna do this. He's the one that decided on the murder weapon. He's the one that bought the murder weapon. Having taken a plea deal, Tim received a much more favorable sentence, despite having been the one that actually killed Justin. Timothy Mosley will spend the rest of his life in prison with no chance of parole. Mosley previously pleaded guilty to the aggravated murder of 18-year-old Justin Back. Warren County prosecutors say the Dayton man strangled and stabbed Back more than 20 times at his Waynesville area home in January during an attempted robbery. And Justin's family was actually a bit more accepting of his apology than they were in Austin's case. There's not a day or night that goes by that it doesn't haunt me of what I did. And there's absolutely no excuse, and I just want you guys to know that I really am sorry. With Tim speaking today, it took another weight off, you know. It's different when, when they're sorry. It doesn't bring Justin back, but it helps with healing. It doesn't bring closure, but it brings some healing. Now, while many people supported the sentencing difference between Austin and Tim, others felt that it was unfair, but... Was it really?
Austin's lawyer appealed the sentencing saying, the imposition of a death penalty was so grossly unfair that it shocks the conscious in that the actual killer, Mosley, received life without parole, while the accomplice, Myers, received the death penalty. The prosecution responded to this by saying that Justin would still be alive if not for Austin, who not only targeted his childhood friend, but also restrained Justin during the attack. But Austin's lawyer disagreed. He said in cases involving plea deals, the less problematic defendant is usually the one who testifies against the more blameworthy one. The prosecution responded to this by saying that if there was anyone deserving for their life to be spared, it was Tim, because he had cooperated with the police early in the case, even before a plea deal had been struck, and pointed investigators to evidence that independently corroborated his story. Justin's parents, Sandy and Mark, agreed with this. Mark said, Myers was the brains, but Mosley was the weapon that he used. He came up with all the plans to do it. He chose to get Mosley to help him. He chose Justin. He went on to say that he wished the two teens had made different choices that afternoon. They could have waited a couple of more weeks to rob and no one would have been home. Justin would have left to join the Navy and he and his wife would have been at work. But the teens, specifically Austin, chose to robe the Kate's house knowing that there was a safe inside and knowing that Justin would be home. He had a choice. Justin didn't have a choice. He could have stopped it. He could have called 911. He could have stepped in. He could have helped save Justin, but he didn't. Again, that was his choice. And for that reason, Justin's parents believe Austin should die. As for Tim, they believe that he earned the right to keep his life after he showed remorse. That's the difference. Although the judge had called the plea deal with Tim troublesome, he wrote that Austin does not escape culpability just because Mosley cannot be put to death for his crimes. The prosecution said that the plea deal was a risk they were willing to take and they believe it was the best strategic decision. Because we believe strongly that Tim Mosley providing that information helped the jury better understand what the whole case was about, what Tim's role and what Austin's role was. Austin's lawyer also brought up Austin's age, saying that he was a teenager at the time and that his brain was still developing. After considering all the arguments the Ohio Supreme Court ruled that Austin's lawyer's arguments were not enough to reverse the death sentence. They explained their decision, saying that Austin had not only come up with the idea, but he had taken an active role in the killing by holding Justin as Tim stabbed him 21 times. Austin's execution was scheduled for July 20th, 2022, but as of June 2023, he is still on death row at Chilcoth Correctional Institution in Ohio. What do you think about this case? Do you agree that what Austin did was worse than Tim? Let me know in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos.